Good morning. Welcome back to the Desert Road. Today we have this awesome 2022 BMW X3 and we're going to be taking it on a drive to find out if this is a great alternative to all the other luxury SUVs. So come along with me and we're going to find out. Guys, welcome back. We're on the desert road today. We have this awesome 2022 BMW X3. This is the refresh model. We're going to talk about um, some of the changes. But before we do that, make sure you click the thumbs up button. These videos take a lot of work to do. And uh, Alex and I put in uh, tons of man hours to make sure you guys are getting some awesome content here. So smash that like button. Do whatever you got to do. Leave a comment. We will answer all of them. Now let's talk about this BMW and uh, see what we like and we don't like. All right, to start off, this 2022 X3 comes with some changes. The front, the rear are all updated. Uh, I like the changes that they did, although the rear is not my favorite. The lights in the back look a little bit like, uh, like they have the cyborg elements of them. The front looks absolutely fantastic. This is the 2022, this is the X-Line model this is not the m sport and i think i still think it looks plenty sporty even with this package so uh if you're debating between the two take a look at the changes they're very very minimal on this x3 the front headlights look very very awesome they have the classic bmw uh inserts in there and for once bmw did not actually butcher the front of the car like they've been doing with many of the recent models putting some really really big front grills on there so this one through the years believe it or not this x3 is coming on a 20 year anniversary since it was released in the united states so it still remains kind of true to the core true to bmw it has the classic bmw look and i think uh you know bmw did a great job keeping this car not all that much different from when they began Exterior package looks fantastic. It's uh, in blue. As you can see, it has the blackout front grille. It also has the blackout badges on the back. The rest of the trim in this car is in silver. It actually looks pretty damn good all around. This particular model comes on 21 inch wheels. And to my surprise and big shock, they actually ride really, really well. These are the run flat tires. Usually I stick with smaller wheels and tires on, uh, on on the cars, they just provide for a better ride. But here, honestly, I couldn't tell that this is on, on bigger wheels. They look fantastic. This is uh, These are factory wheels, they're painted in gloss black. I think if you opt for these, you won't be disappointed um, on, on any road surface. So it's definitely a worthy option to get. All right, moving on to the interior, classic BMW fare. Um, one of my chief complaints is I'm not particularly comfortable in this car. There's nothing inherently wrong per se, but everything just feels slightly off. Um, everything is very, very stiff to the touch, including the steering wheel. The seat is rock hard, all the body panels. There's nothing that's overly, you know, on the cheaper side even, but I, I can't get into a, a very comfortable position. The visibility is not bad out of this car, but certain other cars in this class the Q5, the XC60 definitely have better visibility, especially out the back. It almost seems like they put a kind of like a smaller windshield. The side uh, driver and passenger window aren't bad, but make sure you guys can get comfortable in this car because I think it takes a certain body type and height to be comfortable in what this car is meant to be. Moving on to other parts of the interior. The screen is absolutely fantastic. Great resolution. It is a touch screen. Uh, it, it has absolutely everything you need. The center dash is great here as well. Uh, all digital. It now has the map uh, right in the middle here. The tachometer, the speedometer. Typical of all of uh, the new BMW cars. Really nothing to complain about in that sense. 
the, the wheel looks very standard, almost outdated. You do get the updated wheel with the M Sport package, a slightly sportier wheel. It, it feels okay in the hand. I wish it was even a little bit thicker. Uh, nothing wrong with the way it feels. Um, just it looks like something from BMWs of prior models. This particular car does not come with the heads up display. It's, it is an option in one of the models. I recommend getting it. I love heads up display in any car that I get. It really makes seeing the speed limit uh, and, and your speed simultaneously a heck of a lot easier. The trim in here looks great. It's got this nice matte aluminum finish here. Uh, there's wood trims that you can get. I think this, this silver aluminum trim is very fitting to this X3. Overall, the size of this cabin is not bad, but again, I am not the biggest fan of the ergonomics in here. Uh, just the seating position feels weird. Um, the location of the armrest feels weird. Uh, and the seat is in the highest position as it is. And uh, it still feels like you're a little bit too low inside of this car. So again, make sure prior to buying it that you adjust the seat and make sure you can get fairly comfortable in this X3. The back seats is actually where the surprise comes in. It's very, very roomy back there. I believe that's what BMW did. They gave you more room in the back. They sacrificed a little bit of room in the trunk. But if you're taking a, if you have people in the back seat, even taller adults, I think they won't have any difficulty stretching out their legs on a longer drive. Uh, you do get decent headroom in the back as well. My one complaint again is that the seats were overly stiff in the back seat. So again, make sure that you like the seats, you like the way they feel, and uh, th this car will fit your driving style and uh, body proportion. The trunk, again, uh, the BMW did sacrifice a little bit of room in the trunk to give the back seat more room. The ironic part is that this X3 is the biggest car in this luxury compact SUV class between the Q5, the XC60 and the GLC 300 Mercedes. So this BMW is the longest out of all of them. And I think where it shines is this backseat space, but the trunk did get sacrificed quite a bit. So make sure that it'll work for your purpose and whatever you're carrying in that trunk. Okay, also this car comes with the standard stereo system. It doesn't have the upgraded Harman Kardon. Um, I like music, I would upgrade its an $875 option. I would throw that upgrade in there. Um, it, this music system does fine in here, especially if you don't blast it on super high volume, it sounds decent. The black headliner works really well in here. It's got the fully blacked out moonroof. I really appreciate that modern cars now don't put this half-assed mesh in. Uh, this is a fully solid cover in here if you want it. It really helps here in uh, Arizona summers and just, just year round keeping, keeping some of the heat out of the cabin. All right guys, moving on to the engine and the ride of the car. This comes paired with a 2.0 inline four cylinder engine making 248 horsepower and 258 pound feet of tor torque made it to an eight speed traditional automatic transmission. Overall, this car does have enough power, but I think some of the power delivery is sort of jerky and not overly as smooth as some of the other counterparts. For example, the Q5 has a dual clutch transmission and with the same power, it feels uh, almost zippier to me driving that around. So uh, make sure you enjoy the way this responds. It is on the jerkier side. It's not my favorite. I think all the rivals do a better job delivering that power in the same power class. As mentioned before, this car does ride on 21 inch wheels and I feel overall the car rides smooth, but there's this certain, I don't know, uneasiness or choppiness to the ride of this X3. It's neither fully on the luxury side and it's neither fully on the sports side. It's this kind of in between where it tries to do both, but it does neither fairly well. I think other cars in the class lean, again, more one way, especially towards the luxury side. This is the definitely sportiest car in its class, but it does this sport almost uh, sacrificing some of the luxury feel that, that you might get, and not particularly in a good way. 
to kind of sum it up, I almost think like this car is just not confident in its sports abilities. Um, it, it, it's jerky on pickup. It's, it's slightly jerky once you're on the road. It just, it doesn't have this fluid smoothness that you would expect from a luxury car in, in this class. So again, in this car class, I would probably pick this car last. Um, I like the Q5, I like the XC60, I like the GLC 300 Mercedes. This kind of offers none of the pros of the luxury and none of the pros of the sport to me. I, I really don't know exactly what to do with this car um, or, or, or find myself enjoying driving it. The steering feel in here is pretty great. Um, if anything, it's a little bit on the twitchy side. Again, um, the car is quick to maneuver with the inputs you provide. But, but again, I think in a car of this class, um, you don't really need that. You almost wish that this had a slightly lazier steering because it, it puts in the sport where you almost don't need it. Uh, the braking feel, typical BMW braking feel, um, goes fairly firm. Um, nothing to complain about. I don't particularly like the throttle response, not off a of light and neither off at speed. It's a very lazy throttle. It takes a little bit to lean in there until you're picking up speed. Overall, this is not my favorite engine and transmission pairing. I think other cars in this class do it much better. All right, now before we wrap this up, we're gonna briefly go through three likes and three dislikes of this car. My number one, the first like, I really enjoy the styling of this car. I think it looks modern, it looks fresh. BMW did a good job keeping the car to the BMW look and uh, traditions. The front looks fantastic, the back looks good. I love this car paired with the 21 inch wheels. Overall, the exterior looks fantastic. My number two like, I like this screen. The screen, it's big. It's very easy to read. It's a great infotainment system, very responsive. It's touch screen. Um, I really have no complaints with the way the screen is. And number three, like, I like the amount of back seat room there is in a car of this class. You can definitely fit two adults comfortably in there, especially if you're going on a longer trip. Now, moving on to the three dislikes. Okay, the number one dislike, the steering is twitchy on this car. It's almost too responsive. Uh, in a car where I don't need it to be. Uh, this is far from a sports car and it's elevated, so it definitely does not need that response on here. Number two dislike, I don't like the way this gas pedal and the transmission are made it to the engine. Although the car drives fairly smoothly on the road, there's just this certain uneasiness or twitchiness once you apply the gas pedal. And moving on, number three dislike, it's the ergonomics in this car. It's everything from the stiffness of the seat, the seating position, uh, just, just overall the way this interior is, is not my favorite. I'm not comfortable at all in this car. Um, again, maybe you would be or you would find these seats comfortable, but I think in its class, it doesn't provide me the luxury that I'd be looking for in a day-to-day -day car such as this. All right, guys, I hope you like this review of this 22 BMW X3. Let us know what you like or dislike in the comments. Did you buy this car? Are you shopping for this car? Or are you looking at some of the uh, competitors? Let us know in the comments. We'll let you know what we think. We've driven all those cars. Until next time on the desert road.